central Norway, the third biggest town in Norway today. It's, I mean, Evo Township was a reasonably large town on the outskirts of Europe. And the, it's estimated to be around 5,000 or up towards 5,000 inhabitants in Trondheim, in the medieval age. And it's, it's situated sort of halfway between Norway and, now if I had something to point with, there would be Bergen is down, down here. And this was the main port for export down to Europe from dried fish from the northern parts of Norway and from around sort of halfway down. And also a trading where, 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 where the ship, ships would have stopped on the way down to Bergen and further on to Europe. And this is the reconstruction here. See the river coming in. That Today that river goes through the middle of Trondheim and the city has expanded. It's today on both sides of the rivers. And up there is the fjords and the sea is further out to the west. And this is just a picture of reconstructions, how they think the streets looked and the houses were built, where the people would have walked around on these wooden wooden pavements or cobbled, cobbled pavements. So <coughs> what I've been I've been trying to do for yeah, it must be nearly ten years now since I started I started off by looking at the, the graveyards and the social certification of the graveyards. Because we so that I'm going to talk about, and then I've gone on to look at mobility, and we have genetic data, and and then I'm going to talk about a few individuals from 12th century, now 13th century Trondheim. And the, according to the legislation at the time, the, the graveyard should be divided according to social status, where the upper classes should be buried close to the church, and the slaves and the lowest should be close to the graveyard fence. And it also says that the sexes should be separated on the graveyard with women being buried north of the church and <coughs> to the south and men to the south of the church. And for my PhD I tried to investigate this osteoarchologically and look at sort of evidence of uh, physical stress, assuming that the lower classes would be more subjected to hard physical labor than the upper classes, and looked at the difference between the inner and the outer half, half of the graveyards from four different towns in Norway. Now, what I found that the, the so degenerative changes were more, they were more prevalent to the outer half of the graveyards, and it also the onset of these changes came at an earlier age. So it seems it seems to have been practiced as it says in the laws, and also the sexes appear to have been separated at an early point. But the way the way it looks, it it stopped reasonably early, or before the thirteenth century. Anyway. So this was started by when when you combine. Osteoarchaeological material with the uh, historical sources. At least I, th I think we've shown that the, the graveyards were socially stratified. So at least when you find a skeleton, you can you can possibly place them in the social hierarchy in a way. At least if you find them close to the church, you, you would assume they were high-status individuals and vice versa, slaves or sort of close to the boundary of the graveyard. And then, and then we did uh, we did stable oxygen isotope analysis on basically 97 individuals. But since this is about med uh, medieval stuff, I'll, I'll concentrate on the medieval on the medieval samples we did because we also did post medieval. So we had 40 medieval individuals, and what we found that at least. At least 40% were born outside of Trondheim, and during oxygen you can't you can't say you, you can't distinguish between the centre of town being grown home, grown up in town, or grown up in the near surrounding area. So 
this number might be much higher, but at least 40% were born far enough away from Tondheim to be recognised by oxygen isotope analysis. So, and a very interesting thing that I I'd never thought of before anyway, that was the movement of children, because we sampled the first molar and the third molar, and about yeah, about a third of the individuals that had moved uh, in, in Prana, they had actually moved there during, before the development of the crown on the third molar, before the late, which develops late childhood, early teens. So there's a, there's a, there's a lot of, there's, there's a significant amount of child uh, mobility. So what, what, this, what, what this means, I don't know, we haven't, we haven't gone into this for historical sources and things, but you can easily think about peop young people going into the, into the town to work as child labor and that kind of stuff, which is not uncommon today even, so. And yeah, you talk about the, the, the direction people came from, the, the vast majority came from the north and from the east. And this was also sort of unexpected, because we always talk about the connection with the West, with the British Isles, with Europe. And what it seems like is actually the connection is much stronger towards the north and the east than it is from elsewhere. And some, even though the majority of the people who were, moved, were born outside Trondheim seem to have been born within the radius of three, four hundred kilometers, we have people who must have come at least a thousand kilometers away from northern, northern Russian areas and that kind of that way. And there's a, there's a, one or two people that might have been might have come from as far south as yeah, northern Italy or southern France. But we haven't looked further into that, so we can't really say, but they are definitely from the south somewhere. And the same four individuals, here, here's the, there's the, the haplogroup distribution in the, among those four individuals. And it's, it, I say it's a, a quite, quite a varied uh, haplogroup population. And when, I, when I've looked at other published data from different places around Europe, medieval populations, it's at least as varied as any other population I've found, and this is way on the outskirts of Europe. It's it's not centrally located at all, so so I, I don't know if this was expected or not. But at least it's interesting to see that this is this variety, this mix of people have stretched all across Europe, really. And and if you look. If you're trying to get some direct look, look at the direction of the movement, the influence in this for these haplogroups, you have one haplogroup that's interesting. That's a double U, because that's very rare in Norway. Even today, it's rare. And and so that so that's definitely a cent, it's found in Central Europe. I think this probably you know more about this, but. But, but it's rare in Norway, and it seems to be people who come in, and the iron, there's another sample of 40, 50 Iron Age individuals investigated a couple of years ago, and Hebrew W was not found there at all. So that, this might be a new, relatively new influence from Central Europe. And you have Hebrew uh, Z, which also points towards Asia or that kind of eastwards. Direction and it's also found among the Sami, and it's been suggested that this has been brought to the Sami population from the Volga, Ural regions of Russia. Words and among the the haplogroup U, you have U5b, which is uh, typically found among the Sami as well. So you might have. So this this is interesting enough to see that you have a you you might you might have people moving even. From the Sami regions down, down to Trondheim and being buried in a Christian graveyard because they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been Christian. From uh, they, they, they wouldn't have had a Christian religion at the, at the time. So, well, and 
Yeah, look, look at this, and then we have gone further to look at what the population actually consists of, and there are the individuals. And I think when you get down to the individual level, that's when I think it's even more interesting, especially from a dissemination point of view, because if you want to make people understand something about the population, I think you should talk about individual people. And today, people migrating today, it's not groups, it's people migrating today as well. There's a we we did ex we went further into this and this was they were excavated in 19, 19, 1985 and looked like this and this is them today and what and after and then we got Caroline Wilkinson to reconstruct these people to do the facial reconstructions and these have been part of an exhibi museum exhibition that's been in Bergen for a year now she was just taken down last week. And this, this, this young woman died in her early 20s, and she, I'm, I'm pretty sure she, she could have come from that, that little part in central Scandinavia, central northern Scandinavia, inland. Her lifestyle values could fit in there. But the much larger area is on northern western Russia where she could have been born. Now, and by, and by the time she had, had reached her teens, she had moved to Trondheim or around Trondheim. So she moved, th th this woman moved a long way be before, she was, before, before, she, before she was a grown up. And she belonged to the haplogroup H4A, which is sort of Central European, it's found in Central Europe, and it's uh, Central Gravity and Northern, Northern Spain. Spain, I think today. So where that, so where that doesn't really fit with the northern region. But we don't we don't know anything about her father, of course, and there's no reason why someone shouldn't have moved up there. But and for this, and we also found genetic evidence of Salmonella in her bones and teeth. So that's what we think she probably died of. Is it, th this, is all, this is also a woman looking very, very different from, from, from the, odd, the, odd, the other very petite <laughs> woman. This is a much more ro robust individual. And she, she, belongs, she belongs to the, 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 the haplogroup W5A 2B, which is only found in Germany. This is the only place they found it today, at least what's are found in the databases. So she could have been born in Norway, as uh, the isotope values fit with, with that. But considering the rarity of this, do, this uh, the haplogroup W in Norway, and that it's only found there, I tried to look for elsewhere she could have been born. And the only place in Central Europe in, or down there she, that fits with her values is up in, relatively high up in the Alps. That's the only time they, me they measured values this time. So over a thousand meters. So, so if you combine the DNA and the isotopes, with, they say, I think that's a possibility also where she could have been born. And this, this man we think is a more local well, every, every, everything we can't we can't know for sure that it's local, but th there's no th th there's no real reason to think that it wasn't local. And also, he, he has this is a very rare case of a, actually a heel trepanation at the back of the head, which is not found in man, in medieval Scandinavia. This is that's very rare to find. And I think to have to have an individual being being treated, being operated on, having sur having surgery done, you need you need expertise, and you need someone to take care of him because he would have survived for a reasonable amount of time. And there, there's no medical institutions in Trondheim at the time. You have monasteries, and there, there's no medical education. So I think this also points towards con it shows contact either. People have moved to Trondheim, to Central Europe, to maybe to some of the universities and studied medicine or something, or 
or maybe people with a medical background or could have moved to. Because I, I think I, I think to be able to do this and make this person survive for quite a while, you need some more than just the local, you know, the local guy pulling the teeth or whatever that would have done that kind of thing normally. So, so this is what I'm trying. To, I'm trying to sort of the influences in in the population and see where people come from and see and look at the the diversity. And I. Yeah, it, we used the history, the legal history of biology, biological anthropology, paleopathology, high stuff analysis, you know, facial reconstruction, everything. And the more, the more we study this population, the more I think it looks like a normal, modern day sort of urban population. With influences from pretty much everywhere, you have all sorts of kinds of different expertise. And, yeah. I think the time is. Up. There has been a re do we have a minute or two? Uh, no. no, no, then we drop this. <laughs> so.